Have you ever wondered how certain photographers can create images with lakes and oceans where the water is just as smooth as glass? Gives it almost this ethereal look. In fact, I want to show you a few of my images so you can see what I mean. Well, that's what I want to help you learn how to do today is to learn how to turn water into glass to create those ethereal and heavenly looks in your images when you're photographing lakes or the ocean. Today we're out in Big Bear, California, and that's Big Bear Lake behind me. And as you can hear, the wind is very strong, which is creating some very uh, rough waters on the lake. And that's actually going to work to our advantage. Uh, it's not necessarily the ideal condition for doing this, but nonetheless, you're going to see how you can create these smooth effects even when the water is that rough. In addition, not only is what I'm going to show you today going to teach you how to create that glass-like effect upon lakes and oceans, you're also going to discover that what I'm going to show you today will also help turn white puffy clouds, which as you can see, uh, the sky is filled with white puffy clouds today. Uh, this effect is going to ha help smooth those out as well, and it's going to help create this beautiful look in the clouds where it's as if they've just been painted across the sky. And so let's go down to the lake now so I can show you how to do this. The way you create smoothness across the lake as well as the ocean, the way you paint the clouds across the skies is with a special filter known as an ND filter. ND stands for neutral density. Now what a ND filter does is it allows you to take longer exposure so that the, as the water continues going back and forth while the camera is exposing the image, it smooths out the water. And the way the ND filter works is it works like a pair of sunglasses, a dark pair of sunglasses that you put over your camera lens so that you can allow more time to elapse without blowing out or overexposing the image. And so what I want to do is I want to take an image right now so that you can see what it looks like without the filter. I'm going to get it all set up. Okay, so I have my focal point out there. I'm just using these. There's some some rocks with some moss covering. I'm using them as visual weight for the uh, for the foreground. I mean, this isn't going to be an epic image. I just want to show you how to use this properly. Um, I'm in manual mode. I have um, my ISO is at 100, and I am on f16. And so let me check my, let me just check my electronic meter. Yeah, we're good there. And alrighty. And I've also got a two second delay going. So here we go. Okay, so I've taken the normal photo uh, without the ND filter. Now what I want to do is put my ND filter on. The ND filter that I have is from Lee Filters. These are some of the finest filters you can get. I'd highly recommend them. In the description below, I will give you a link to where you can get the Lee filter at. The first thing that you want to do is you want to put the ring adapter on. The lens adapter ring here is what enables your Lee filter holder to attach to your camera lens. 
when you purchase a filter system from Lee Filters, you want to make sure that you order a adapter ring that fits with your lens. The size of my Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens is 82 millimeters, and therefore I ordered a ring adapter that was 82 millimeters, of course. Now, the way you attach the filter system is with the use of an adapter ring, like you see here from Lee Filter, and you simply just screw the adapter ring onto the end of your lens, and that will enable you to then attach the filter holder. So let's get the filter ring attached. Okay, now that we have the lens adapter ring attached, what we're going to do is put the filter holder on. As you see, there is a blue tab here and you use the knob on the end in order to pull the tab back so that the filter holder will slide easily over onto the ring adapter. And then you just lock it down so it doesn't move. I am using the big stopper and how this works is Lee not only uh, gives you a little card that comes with the filters to show you how to expose. So right now I have my uh, settings. So right now I'm at one one hundredth of a second. And so on the Lee filter card, it tells me that when I'm at one one hundredth of a second, I want to have uh, about an eight to ten second exposure. And so that's what I'm going to do after I put my filter on. Now, like I said, these are like a dark pair of sunglasses. In fact, I can barely see out of this. It's so dark. I have a lighter uh, filter, the little stop that I also use, but I won't be using that right now. So this just slides in like so. And it's eight seconds. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna try it for 10 seconds this time. Look, it appears like it might be a little dark. It's hard to tell though because it's, it's so bright out right now. So I'm gonna do it again, but this time I'm gonna shoot for 10 seconds and see how that works. Good. Now I'm going to do a longer exposure. Now I'm going to go to 15 seconds. I'm going to move it up to 20 seconds just so you can see the difference. This enables you to get really creative with your photographs. Now I'm going to go up to 25 seconds. And 
last one I'm going to do it 30 seconds. having a 30 second exposure, I mean even a one second exposure, you've got to have a, a sturdy tripod. Okay, well what I want to do now is I want to head back down the mountain, go into my home office and let's process these images and see what uh, ND filter can do for even waters as rough as Big Bear Lake on a high windy day. Hey, I want to thank you for joining me in this week's episode. As we head down the hill, I just wanted to ask a favor. If you're finding this content helpful, uh, can you do me a huge favor and hit the like button? And if you're not subscribed to my channel, can you please subscribe to my channel? Uh, YouTube, uh, the algorithms on there pick up on these things. And the more likes I get, the more subscribers I get, the more my content will get out to a wider audience. And uh, that would just be a huge blessing. So anyways, again, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Let's head back down to my home office and let's see what these images look like. Hey, thanks for sticking with me. We're back down the mountain and we're in my office where I'm gonna show you the difference that an ND filter can make in your photography. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the image that we just captured up at Big Bear Lake and I'm gonna show you how the ND filter works here you see the first image that I took up at Big Bear Lake. And with this image, I was not using an ND filter. And so we see here, you've got the rough waters of the lake because of the windy day. I also want to point out that you have the clouds here, just your normal uh, round puffy clouds. And I also want you to notice this foam in here, because these are the three things that I'm going to be pointing out with the image. Not that they're vital, but I want you to notice a difference. Uh, that we're going to see with the smoothness of the lake as well as I want you to notice how these uh, round puffy clouds are going to start having a painted effect on them and I also want you to observe how this foam that is collecting right here at the edge of the photograph is going to be smoothed out as well and so here with this first image though that was again the one that was taken with no filter I want you to see that it here is at 1 1,000th of a second at f18 and it's at ISO 100. And so let's go ahead and look at the second photograph now, which was with an 8 second uh, exposure with the ND filter. And just as I suspected up at the lake when I took this, this is a little underexposed, but nonetheless, if, if this was the only image I would have captured, I could definitely fix this with post-processing but I come from the belief that hey let's get the exposure right in the camera that's what photography is all about and what we see here though is looking here we've got this 8 second exposure I'm still at f18 in ISO 100 but we see that the lake is very much smoothed over compared to the original photo here without the ND filter also, the second thing that I want to point out is we see that even though the clouds have shifted, so we're not looking at the same clouds now, but we can see that it's starting to get an effect of a paintbrush compared to these puffy, normal uh, Southern California clouds. And lastly, let's look down here at the foam. Let's see what the longer exposure did with the foam. So we see that it now almost looks like a ghostly or a milky effect. Well, let's go to that second photograph I took, which was at a 10 second um, exposure. And at a 10 second exposure, again, still at F18, and we are at ISO 100. We see up here in the histogram, we have a much nicer uh, image that has been exposed, much closer to what it should be. And we notice that there's just this glass smooth look over the lake and let's go back to the original photograph 
Uh, so we see the difference here between those two is drastic. And we also see that the clouds have that painty, that painter's effect beginning to um, occur. And look at the foam. Again, in the original photo, we've got this foam building up here. And here we see this really nice, smooth, uh, ghostly or milky effect that is taking place. I really like that look. Now let's go to the next photograph. I believe it was at a 15 second exposure. Yeah, so again, every all of the settings stay the same except for the exposure. So we're still at F18 and ISO 100. And we see that um, when we look up here at the histogram, we've still got a really nice exposure here. We see, again, in the first area on the lake, it's just as smooth as silk, just really beautiful. I love this exposure. Uh, I like the clouds also. If these clouds would have been bigger, I would have preferred it greatly because it would have put a nice paint stroke across the sky. And lastly, we see that at a 15 second exposure, uh, the milk kind of disappeared from the last photo. So I actually prefer this 10 second exposure here um, as opposed to this as far as what it did with the foam. But let's go on now to a 20 second exposure. With the 20 second exposure, we still see we've got uh, really that same beautiful look across the lake. And we see that the clouds are beginning to be even more uh, forming like a paintbrush stroke. If they were bigger, it would really have uh, been nice, but th these are very small in comparison. And again, down here at the, where the foam is building, we still see we've got that nice white smoothie, milky look right there. And I believe we've, I believe I've got two more exposures. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a 25 second exposure and you can see that it's still a very doable uh, the, the, the image looks great. Uh, it's a little, a little bright. So I'd probably bring down, bring up the highlight some and, uh, darken it just a bit, but it, it looks good. Um, the clouds again are being even more painted and we've got the foam here that is, uh, still there. It's smoother, but, uh, I really like how it looked at that 10 second. It just gave it an extra feel. Okay. Final exposure is at 30 seconds, F18 still, ISO 100, and we're still in a good exposure range. I would darken it a bit, um, but it, it looks great. Um, we see we've got, a, I really like the feel of this uh, image at 30 seconds, because uh, this, this milky effect here, um, you can, it seems like it's a little, let me double check that. Yeah, it is, okay, that's what I thought. It's it's. As you can see, that's what I love about the 30 second exposure is as you can see, there's this, this little uh, nice cloudy, milky effect beginning to take place here as well, which I really like. Um, and so if this was an image that I was aiming for and to getting, um, you know, to showing to the public as far as like something I'd be proud of, I, I would need obviously sunrise, sunset or uh, some really powerful clouds in the back, uh, in the sky, of course. But if if all if if one of those three scenarios were taking place, um, I would probably be doing my post processing with this image, just because I like this uh, feel here as well. But you've got the smoothness on all of the photos with the ND filter, and by the way, it's an ND10, a 10 stop filter. Um, is what I use and what I'd recommend unless it's low light early morning late uh, getting late in the evening during the golden hour then you want to go to the little stopper instead of this one which is the big stopper uh, but again the three things we see the lake is smooth we see the clouds are even more painted and um, yeah even up here you could see it just has that nice painters feel and so you could see that if this was a, a much larger uh, cloud formation it would really look sweet um, and so 30 seconds is usually I'm, I'm usually hanging out in the 20 to 30 second range um, at this time of day because I just really like the results of the ND filter and again you've got this nice smoothie smooth feel here as well so anyways this is 
uh, how you use an ND filter, a neutral density filter, and it really, really enhances your images and just brings a real fine art feeling to it, an artistic uh, feeling to your image. It's something that you are producing not with Photoshop or post-processing, but it's something that you are producing through your camera out in the field, which is always best case scenario. I want to thank you again for taking the time to watch this week's episode on how to use an ND filter. And if you found this week's episode helpful, can you do me a huge favor once again and just hit the like button as well as the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and even hit the little bell as that will let YouTube know that anytime I upload new content, they will just send you a little note letting you know that I have some new content uploaded. But uh, this really helps the algorithms with YouTube and gets my content out to a broader audience. And so again, thank you so much for watching and until next week, go out and capture the world. Yeah.